If you guys want to videotape, you can. It's up to you. It doesn't matter to me. I'm videotaping mine, so we learn. Everyone learns differently, right? So how do you learn? It's up to you. Everyone. Good morning, everyone. years now. It's a long time. Who's 22 years old? Nobody, right? So you have a long time to go to find a profession. When I talk about people at healthcare, I have interns in my office. I want every semester that I do for, for the local high school and also the grad school and also uh, sometimes university. They, a lot of them come in with an idea they want to be passionate in healthcare. They want to help people, correct? Okay. This talk is about caring in healthcare. Why is this, there is a need for this? When you go see a doctor, have you guys seen a doctor recently? Anytime in the last couple of years? Anybody? I have. Okay. Sometimes they're very personable. Sometimes they're not. What does that mean? They communicate well with you. They have eye contact. They, and they, you get to understand that they care about you. Okay. How do you know if someone cares about you? Your doctor, your family member, whatever it is. How, what's your preference? I don't know. Okay. There's different ways to do that. Different ways to communicate that to show that you care. That's the plan. When I do talk to a lot of seniors, my patients also, I send them to go see your doctor for an MRI because I do a lot of backs and necks, MRI, a shoulder issue, or a foot issue. They come back and go, man, the doctor just didn't hear me. I go, what do you mean? They didn't listen to me. I, I, in my mind, in their, the patient's mind, they, they thought that the person did not understand what they said, did not listen to them. Because of that, they did not care about them. Does that make sense? Okay. What's the number one way you can show you can care about somebody when you're talking to someone? When you're, what's the number one way? Let me back it up to show that you're paying attention. Yes. Active eye contact. Active eye contact. Good job. There you go. I get a little prize involved in it all. Here's your goal. Little bribery to raise your hand and participate. Thank you. I'm sorry. Hand it off my head. Yesterday. Okay. So eye contact. What? And, and you go to your doctor. What does the doctor do? Is an iPad, okay, Mrs. Sally, May, whatever. You have this problem, I see this on your, on your paperwork. What's going on? And as you're talking to them, what are you doing? Writing stuff down here versus listening to you the whole time. So that eye contact shows that person, especially older people, that, that you care. And if you care, that point, they're going to know, you're going to understand, you the doctor, you the nurse, you the, you the assistant, you someone in healthcare they're looking for help for, 
is there to be there with them to help them. That's all they want to do. Part of my, one of my things in my office, I tell people, there's a sign out front, and then that sign says, always comfort your patients. Always comfort your patients. It doesn't matter if you help them or not, but if I help with their back or not. It's you showed that you cared, you showed that you comforted for them, you showed that you actually were there for them. Okay. What's another, what's, a, what's another body language you could do to show that you care? Besides eye contact. Yes, ma'am. Nonverbal expression, so like smiling. Yes. Gosh, good one. Okay. So, everybody, how do you smile? That's not a smile. Can you get smile seriously? Okay. When you smile, what happens to the person do? They want to smile back. It shows a sense of respect sometimes. You know, hey, I'm here for you, I'm here to help you. Okay, when you smile, it's a big way to show that you care. I can't act great, but if you can get to the point where you can smile consistently, it's a learned thing. I never smiled before. I was an introvert, quiet guy, study, head down, but sometimes even mumble, that I had to learn how to talk, how to smile, how to be compassionate with my patients over time, over 22 plus years older than most of you guys are. That point, it took time to get there, but learn it as soon as you can. How do you smile at people everywhere? Practice. How do you learn how to walk? You have practice. You probably don't remember because you're too young. I'm sitting. Okay. So can we learn things over time? Practice them, even in a mirror, if you're if you're self-conscious about it. So you get your smile down to get people to realize, hey, I'm open for you. I want to make sure I can be there for you. Which way we communicate? What else can we do? And we communicate. Yes, sir. Um, active listening. Yes. What's active listening stuff? What does that mean? That's like it's a lot of words for me. I don't understand that. Oh, oh, it's um, well, basically, like what they were saying, like eye, um, eye, like, eye contact, mm -hmm. and um, paying attention to like you're not talking while on your phone or anything. Good. Like, okay. That. Active listening is huge. Yes. Good job. Good job. Sorry, I almost forgot to get to it. Okay. So yes, another way. Just now. Can hold off on it for now. You don't well, want. Well, something similar to what you said, but like I guess reassuring the patient is something else, or the patient asking the doctor something, and the doctor reassuring that. So how would how would you how would you do that? How would you reassure? If I says, "Man, I have, I have back pain, and I it's been bothering me a long time," uh, what would you how would you respond to that? What would you what would you say to that to help reassure them you that you heard them? What would you say? Would be it would be a, a follow up. Say comment or, or reply or question. What would you say? Well, what and, and I, I, know I could hear you thinking in there. Is I would say, man, that's, that's not good. How, and my response, okay, you've had back pain for a long time now. By repeating their their statement, by repeating their statement, allows them to understand that you heard them. <clears throat> yeah, you heard them overall. And by using their certain words too, if they say like, man, I have back pain and it makes me not be able to sleep at night. Go, man, when it does make you sleep at night, what else does it do to you? Repeating what they say shows a sense of caring. Okay? What else could we do? What else could we do? Besides, so you have some verbal, right? What else could we do? We have smiling. What else could we do? What else could we do? Yes, ma'am. Your body motion? Yes. So what, what do you mean by body motion? Um, Sorry, I'm not the tosser. Like, you're not facing towards the person when you're talking to them? Sure. You're not you're not what's that going on? Well you're not Facing towards the person when talking so I'm not doing this when I'm talking to you, right? Yeah. Okay. So you're, you're, you're again, eye contact. You're with them. You're with them. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're in their space. You're not worried about the phone, what lunchtime is, what it's going over here. You're with them. They, and people realize that. People over 30 will realize, are you with them or not? Okay, which is a good thing to have. How else do you how, how else communicate physically with someone when they're when you're with someone when just conversation per se. Not even a page conversation. Yes, ma'am. Not being closed off with body language like crossing your arms and just sitting open. Huge. Okay. If, if someone is sitting and who wants to who wants to be a demonstrator right now? Just for a quick demonstration. Anybody? Come on over. So grab a seat for me. Grab a seat. If I'm, talk, so if I'm talking to you, what I'm going to do, if you're talking to me as a new patient, what I'm going to do, I've never met you before in my life, I'm going to do this. Why am I doing this? 
Open posture, yes. What's his posture? What's your name? I'm Ricky. Ricky Tony. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. What's Ricky's posture? Five people. Yeah, see? Good communication skills. Same as mine. I'm mimicking him. Okay. There's a saying out there, which you can learn this. This is very important as you work with patients. Like attracts like. Like attracts like. If he's sitting like this, his body language is here, I'm going to go here. Just like this. If, if subconsciously, he's going to go, man, this person's like me. He has the same body language as me. We're, we're on the same page. If he's this way and I go like this, <sighs> Ricky, tell me your problems. It's not going to help. He's going to like, get my copay, get me out of here. You know, but, that's, but most doctors do that. They worry about what their body language is not the patient's is. When you walk in a room and go, okay, who is this person? I, look, they're trying, I know what they are here. What's their personality like? Who are they? Are they like this? Do they talk a lot? Do they talk low or high? So a conversation here, if I go like this, and, and tell me about where you go to school. I go to Colton High School. Why Colton High School? Um, I was originally from Pomona. Awesome. I was gonna go to Pomona High School, mm -hmm. but I got transferred. Yeah, I live, I live in Upland, so that's, I know where Pomona is too. What did I just do? How is my tone of voice? Give, give me the back row, give me a middle row. I don't want these people up front diabetes from the candy and give them all the candy. <laughs> I think, yes? His what? Yes, his vibe, his, his, his volume of voice, how loud his voice is, and also how his tone of voice is, how fast he speaks, okay? And, and why, why, and what grade are you in Colton right now? 10th grade. Awesome. 10th grade is sophomore grade, correct? Yes. Good. What do you want to do in the future with healthcare? Or do you want to be in healthcare? Um, I guess I'd probably be, uh, I kind of want to do a HISTO technician. What's HISTO technician? What is that? No. It's where they study the skin of the patients and all that to check for like diseases or anything. That's a growing profession. You know why? A lot of people have skin cancer. A lot of people. So what you're doing is gonna help people in the long term. Good, good. Anything else? No. Go no. grab a seat, Rick. Nice meeting you. Good job. <laughs> All right, good, okay. So that makes sense. When you can match someone's personality, their body language, like tracks, like allows you to, to be with them so they see it, okay? What is your when you walked in today, when you when you came here today, was it how many people thought it was cold? No. Yes. Okay. How many people thought it was hot? Good. Fantastic. How many people thought it was like, eh, okay. Perfect. Yeah, okay, people. That's your perception, that's your truth, that's what you think is true. I don't I when I, I see a patient, I don't care what I think, I want to know what they think. Whatever their truth is, whatever they feel, whatever they're going through, physically, emotionally, psychologically, affects their family, affects their lifestyle, I want to know that, how they feel. If I'm a doctor and says, if I see a patient goes, man, I can't pick up 10 pounds, and I go, 10 pounds is nothing, what's wrong with you? Is that caring? No. For them, because of their back pain, because of their, neck, because of their lifestyle, because of what's going on in their life, their quality of life, that's a lot for them right now. I'm going, man, why? I want to find out why that 10 pounds is heavy for when you have that mentality, when you think about what is their perception like now, what is that patient perception like, and then if, once you get that perception by their communication skills, by how you communicate with them, that allows you to actually get them to know that you care, yes, and then you understand how to help them. And if I tell someone, I'm gonna help you, I'm gonna see you these, these days in a row, I'm gonna see you here, 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 you don't have to see me. To see a chiropractor is voluntary, right? To see a doctor is voluntary, Okay? To take medications is voluntary. To see physical therapy is voluntary. This is not Russia or communist, China, whatever. But we have to make sure, communicate well, so at that point our patient understand that we're here to help them. They trust us. If they trust us, what's gonna happen? They're gonna follow through with their care to get themselves better. What's the number one goal with patients at, from a healthcare perspective? What's, as a healthcare practitioner, I don't care what field it's going to be in, even skincare, what's our overall goal? What do you think? What, give, give me some answers. There's not one right answer. Give me some, raise your hands. Stand up. 
Yeah, long hair. Yes, anything. And red rail, back row, and head Yep, yeah, go ahead, good, good, good. Good. Uh, help your patient, whether it be mentally, physically, or spiritually. Good. And another way to say that? Yes. Wait, I don't think I said that. Oh, go ahead, you said, say your answer. Um, the better understand the different things that people go through for the future health and systems. Especially in research, too. Especially in research, that point. And, but in direct, direct patient care, what's the overall goal? You know what I mean? To make them feel comfortable. Make them feel comfortable, make them feel better, make them improve their quality of life. Quality of life is huge. It could be any, that's a broad, broad way to say, I want them to be able to lift 10 pounds, 15 pounds, 30 pounds, 40 pounds, whatever it is for lifestyle, go home, help their kids. I want them to go home, be able to study because they don't have headaches. Do anyone have headaches here? I deal with a lot of, lot of teenagers that have headaches. We help them as chiropractors, this is what I do, is we help them release pressure in their neck, headache improves. If your headaches improve, how does that help you study better? Does that make your grades go up or go down? Up, up right? Okay? So if, you're, if, you, if, you're, if you don't have headaches, you study better, your grades go up, you're able to study easier. Does that improve your confidence or decrease your confidence? Increase your confidence. Increase. That thumbs up, man. Yeah, that's all about. But it allows, your, allows you to have better quality of life to make your life easier. We all live in a sometimes lower average quality of life, which we, we, we if you want to call it, make it our routine. We, we don't want more. So what I want patients to understand once they get to know them is how do I give them more? How do I get, help them get more out of life by doing things to help them improve? Okay, I'm gonna treat them, I, I adjust their back and necks, whatever all the stuff I do, but I wanna make sure they're quality of life so they can handle the stress of your day. Right now, your life is your stress level is probably max right now. But by to learn what to do with it right now and learn how to live this life at your young age, young age versus my old age, at that point, life, when you get older, gets easier. If you can find ways to cope with what stressors you have now, allows your body to handle more stress later. You may have parents, relatives, family members that go, your life is so easy, you're a teenager, you're in high school, it's easy. Is it easy? No, it's not easy. They say that because they don't, get high, they don't remember high school anymore. They forgot about that. Okay? So realize when you understand that, you have a good way to, how do I make my, how, when you ask questions in your head, how do I get myself a little bit better by learning a little bit more? Okay? How many on time, okay? Okay on time? Yeah, you're good. How, how much time do you have? You have... Good, perfect. Okay, good, so that's all I need. Right now too, how do you talk to yourselves is also important, or I'm sorry, how do you talk to other people is also important too. How many times a day do you use the word thank you? Every day. Every day, okay? And it should be part of your language. When it's not part of your language, thank you or appreciate that, those two things you can say to people, whatever conversation you're having. When you make the part of your language, gets up here to use it all the time. Third thing, third thing you can say that help people feel better about themselves. That's all comes down to. Also, I also want someone to come out of my office feeling better if I adjust their back or neck or anything at all. Can I make them feel better so they leave a little happier? When you're happy, when you feel better, psychologically even too, or mentally or emotionally, what does that do to your body? Does it make your body more stressed or more relaxed? Relaxed. 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 If I'm more relaxed, am I going to feel better psychologically? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay? It may even help you emotionally too and help you. If you're less stressed, are you more motivated as a patient to do more? Yeah. Yes. When we're stressed, the body goes into fight or flight, okay, neurologically, and it tells us not to do anything because if we do anything, it's going to hurt more. So what happens to people as they get older, and they have an injury, they have a hip injury, they have an ankle injury, whatever it is too, because you do a lot of older people sometimes, is their doc even doctors tell them, if you move, it's going to hurt, so don't move. If you don't move enough, what happens? It'll keep hurting. It'll keep hurting, and it'll get weaker and tighter, weaker and tighter. So at that point, you have a patient here that's, that heard their medical advice, listened to the medical advice, and kept on it, they've been, now they can't move at all, and they're weak and tight and sore. Okay, so your job as a healthcare practitioner in the future is understanding the body physiology, doesn't matter if you're from Pomona, from Colton, from Riverside, from Upland, wherever it is too, whatever your ethnicity is, whatever it is, is physiology is physiology. What is physiology, you think? 
But you mean after your physiology. What do you think, middle row, back row? Study the body. What's that? Study the body. Study the body. Mm -hmm. Okay. Of the human body. Okay. Here you go. See if that turns on. It didn't turn. I was hoping for a little dog leg left there. Okay. So the human body is one system. Okay. Control the nervous system, control the nervous system of the body. This, the body is meant to handle stress outside, physically, emotionally, visually, whatever it is, too, and to be able to handle stress and not react to it from a stress perspective. When it does that, my, my homework is what in their body is making their body become less tolerant to stress and get their body, again, quality of life to a higher level of be able to handle that. So when you communicate well and you show that you have a need to care for someone, they can listen to you to get yourself, get themselves overall better. Okay? The other thing too, going back to about big picture is who wants to be able to work later? They get a job. Anybody? You live at home forever? That'd be bad for us parents. Don't do that. We don't like that. Okay. How do we get jobs? Ugh, fun question. As someone asked me. Yes, ma'am. Seeking out opportunities and going to Ask people how. Like right now, if you're a teenager and you go, hey, I have no experience at all, I can't even get blood, I can't do CPR over there, I haven't trained CPR yet, I'm not confident yet. So if you can't do that yet, what can you do to just go and gain some experience? So, yes, sir? Uh, take things like classes or preparatory classes that lead into your field. But you're in classes already, too. So, ma'am, in the back? Volunteer. Oh, volunteer, oh my gosh. It's amazing. Okay, volunteer is phenomenal. Okay, and, and we're, we're, I'll get the one back too. When we volunteer, what happens is you show a need to learn something on the spot. I went to chiropractic school. School was great. Got me through my boards. We had to have four state boards. Four, I think four. At that point, we had, school's great to get you to pass, get your diploma, pass your classes, get your certificate if you want to become a nurse or a doctor, whatever it is to become a doctor or a PhD, whatever it is. Schools are great for that. To learn outside of school, learning from someone who's done it before, that gives you a whole different world of experience. Okay, so volunteering allows you to get that experience in world in real world time. What do people do? With I feel like I said interns in my office that come in, they shadow, and they come and see. Wow, I know doctors did that. Wow, I saw that in a video, but I realized when you're there with someone, you have that you feel what's going on, and every experience is different. I walk around and go, "How you doing, Sally?" Sally, yesterday she was like, today she's, why are you so sad, Sally? My dad died today. I'm like, crap. So I have to change my mentality. How do I help her with that? So a lot of it is, I, I'm going to be a, a, a person as the doctor again. I'm going to be my patients. I'm going to be friendly with them, but not their friend. If that makes sense. Okay, I'm, in my office, I'm their doctor. But I want to be personal with them to show that I'm friendly, to make sure they understand I care about them again, too. So volunteering is awesome. What else could you do? To gain experience. I already have you. You're good. You're good. You're good. You hurt your shoulder right now. You hurt your shoulder. Relax, relax, relax. Yeah, anything else in the back? Yes, Tim. Do I give you a, a thing? Okay. Why community service? How can community service help you? How would that help? I agree, but why? What do you think? Community service is great because it allows you to meet people you may not have met before. Maybe get some connections that way too. And, and, and you really understand how do we help outside of our own little hole. Where I'm saying right now, this is my life. This is what I do. I go to school every day. I eat breakfast, lunch, and make plays for sport, hang with my friends. This is my world. Community service allows you to broaden your perspective. How can I help outside my own personal self? By doing it young now, you'll learn what it feels like and hopefully want to do it more and more and more. If you want to be in healthcare, if you don't care in healthcare, you're not going to be in healthcare very long. Half my class after I graduated, five years later, y'all graduated, got their license, got their certificate, practicing or two, they did something else. They went in for the money. They went in because something else told them something else. They couldn't care enough for people, genuinely, to, to actually stay in the profession. They, they call it burnout. Burnout, whatever that is. Okay. When you care for someone and you, you like your profession, you want, you want to help people, you wait. My wife asked me, like a couple months ago. What's your favorite day of the week? I go, Monday. She goes, Monday is work day. Goes, yeah, I love seeing people. It's my, it's my job. I love, I love seeing people. I love that day because I see my people I didn't see last week. How am I going to help someone else? When you have that mentality, when you, when you get there eventually, community service, volunteering, things like that too, 
get to the next step of learning to care genuinely and learning how to do it subconsciously, you do it all the time. I never did talks before. Afraid of the camera, hate the camera. What I do? Start shooting videos, small videos, longer videos, all the time, everywhere now. Because it's my comfort zone now. But to get comfortable, you have to be uncomfortable first to get, un to get comfortable. Does that make sense? So you have to be uncomfortable to get comfortable. If you like to talk in public, start talking in public. If you like to raise your hand, raise your hand. There's no dumb questions. There are some dumb questions, yes there are. Authentic speaking. But we want to make sure we're doing enough to make ourselves comfortable. We have to, I was something a couple days ago. The best way to learn is to fail. Does that make sense? Because you, you can't, what's that? Because you just do it again and you teach yourself again, you'll do it again. Yes, but don't keep failing. Learn from why you fail. Learn from your mistakes. Yes. We're not all going to get, if you get all A's and A's right now, take harder classes. Okay? You're, you're, you're not pushing yourself. I want people to have, I, my, best, my best interns have C's and B's and eventually get A's because that's when they're going to work harder. We always want to push ourselves a little bit more to get stronger here to handle the next step easier. Do you think college is going to be harder or easier than high school, college? Harder. harder. Good. Thank God you guys are, don't live in a, a, a fake world. Why is college harder, do you think? More advanced. What's that? More advanced. More advanced. More classes are quicker. They're faster. You're given, hey, here's your syllabus. Go learn. I'll see you at midterm. See you at finals. Good luck. Okay. It, right now, is your, is your classes on a standard scale, how you're graded? Like is 100 to 90 an A? Type of thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, what do you think happens in college? What do you think happens in college? Yes, sir. We need a pass or fail. And there are some pass fail classes still, right? Okay, like fast weaving or something, I don't know. But what are most classes that are based on, what's it called? Is it? On a curve. On a curve? Yeah. What's a curve mean? Hmm. Oh, what's a curve mean? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. So if you add to the class, Say for example is, say it's a, it's a bell curve basically, right? Bell curve type of thing. Average, say 100, 100 kids take a test. Average score is 85, okay? Let's say it's just this. Average score is, is 75. That's gonna be a C, correct? Eh, ish. Let's say, let's say average score is 85, okay? At that point, that score, 85, like good, right? That's usually a C plus. Like what the heck happened? Because everyone in your class, you're great against everyone in your class. So what do you have to be? You have to be above average. So you gotta think, when you go, when, what happens your first, first semester of college, I think everyone goes through the first, unless you're like a brainiac. First semester of college, or first quarter here, so quarter system, is everyone's grades go from 4.2, 3.8 in high school, I'm this good, blah, 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 to a 2.9, 3.1. Maybe a 3.2 if you're lucky. Like, oh, because you're not graded on what the teacher thinks is, is important, graded what the actual the whole class is important. So that's your next step. How do I make myself, push myself now to learn how to learn? At that point, get to get that. So when I get there, I am at a three, two, to work myself up from there. It's a whole different level. You guys will be fine, but continue to push yourself more and more. Get uncomfortable, to get comfortable at being uncomfortable, okay? Besides, going back to the volunteering too, Besides volunteering, what else can we do now that you're in high school to learn at a higher level, maybe just in healthcare or something else too? Jessica? Internships. Internships. Did you read my whole syllabus before you came in? <laughs> okay. So it's internships. Or, or like I said, volunteering too. This, it, it's different than doing community service or volunteering and going into an office. Going into the office and going and, and helping out. Okay, that means you're doing something. You're not sitting in the corner. You may have to do paperwork. Who cares? Maybe do social media stuff. Who cares? But can you get in there and get them to see that you're in the background paying attention to everything going on? When you're in an office, it's not just when you go into private practice, for example, or even just a hospital, too. Are you working one day a week? Two days a week. Who thinks three? Anybody? Four? Maybe five days a week? Who thinks five? Sad. Six? 
probably six days a week. Um, what's your shift going to be like in a hospital? Ten hour days? Easy. Can you do this job, whatever it's going to be, for ten hours? Five days a week. Not just Monday. Like I'm going to go home rest the whole week. No. It's every day. So what is that required for your body? I mean, beyond bond, bond, uh, men, internships, what does that require for your body to do to be able to sit, stand, talk to people every day? What do you have to do? Rest. Rest. Good. You know, we need rest. What else do we need? Physical. Can we stand for six hours, seven hours? Can we talk for six, seven hours? Hour, hours? Can we not fall asleep on the job? That'd be bad. Okay? That'd be bad. And that's the thing is you have to realize there's, there's a – when you get into an internship, when you walk in the door, you're like, this is different than school. Good. That when, you, when you have that uncomfortableness, what does your brain do? It opens up. It goes like this, whoa, what am I learning now? What, what's going on? By having that alert reaction, now you start to learn. You start learning the little things, how an office is ran, hospital is ran, personalities, how quick it can be versus what you expected. So understanding that allows your body to adjust quickly when you in internships, going into an office, a job, a position you want to do. My personal story, this is back in the day. Anyone know yellow, page, yellow pages are anymore? Yellow pages? Yellow pages. Like a little book that No, yellow pages. Anybody? Yes. Phone book. Here you go. You saw like some history, history channel or something. I'm not sure what it was. That, that, was my, that was our only way we had our, our social media, per se. Eh, not even that, like, like a Google, per se. Look these things up. Okay? That's all we had. There was no internet back then. There was nothing that we had like candles. We didn't have any like, electricity back then. I'm kidding, we did have electricity. 90s people. But because of that, I, I myself, like, I'm not going to wait till I graduate chiropractic school to actually learn and find a job. Okay, so my job was as a chiropractic school in our, our school was 10 semesters, 10 semesters, grueling, painful. But I, at the first semester, I said, I'm going to go and go in the Yellow Pages, or if it would be Google now, at that point, or Yelp, whatever it is, too. And I'm looking at this profession. How do I find the top 10 out of that and call those 10? At that point, go and volunteer now before I graduate. Why is it good? Why is it good to volunteer before you're looking for a job or intern? Why is that important? How can it help you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you get experience before you go into the job? Yes, experience, yes. What else? How else will help you with that company, that hospital, that person beyond that? Yes, sir. Because people are going to have experience with you. They already know how you work, so the boss responds before you are looking for a job in that same way. Yes, they know you. That part, by volunteering in an office and knowing that person, they get to know you, okay? They know your friend. They're not like, eh, yeah, this guy, Ricky or whatever it is, eh, yeah, kind of, we saw his paperwork, we interviewed him, see how he does. We've seen him for three months, four months, five months, six months. We know who they are. They can trust you, hopefully, if you're good, or you'll learn how to be good. And a lot of doctors, too, and people, if they're nice people and they care about patients, they want you to learn also. They want to help you learn. They want to, they want to bring up the wheel. They want to help you learn. All right? Any questions though before I wrap it up? Anything? Was that helpful? Learn something? Did you have fun? Yeah. What's the one thing you should start doing today then? Smile more. Smile more. Oh, good. Good job. I'm going to give you candy. And the last one. Good job. All right? Enjoy your day. Have fun today. Learn a lot. Smile. Say thank you. Appreciate it. Get the heck out. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Did I do okay, first one?